dreams that we got pursue. I mean, we all got dreams that we got believe in. I mean, we all got targets that we got achieve. So how can I rest when I got family to feed? I mean, with my intuition, I'll make wise decision. I'll navigate the chaos and avoid collision. Stick to the program and follow my vision. I'm just trying to keep it real. I got a legacy to build. Yo, I do it for my brothers, do it for my future son. We were just on block life, but look what we become. Yo, 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 yo. It's your boy HUN Tizzy and we're back again. It's the Golden Era UK Rap Podcast. Can I get a round of applause? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to make sure that the energy is always correct. I hope everyone at home's good. Um, The normal things that we normally tell you to do is like, subscribe, share the page, um, algorithm-ish. Because we go through the intros quick now. Like, we just want to get to the point. So here's the due diligence, like what we do every week. We're going to shout out Wagwan. That's the Wagwan. sponsor, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got Wagwan. You know what I mean? Um, big up Kofi's Kitchen. That's at the business centre, Mill Mead. Come down, you get some nice food. Yeah, man, clap it up, innit? Hey, um, big up No Invite. Yeah, okay, yes. Big up Consume London. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes are there, you know what I'm saying? The links are in the description. Big up um, Stashbox. Studios and Chauncey hey. T A W hey. on the visuals. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. you see, <laughs> everyone's clapping. All right, big up everyone at home. Let's get into this. This is the golden era. Um, yeah, it's about me getting people from the early two thousands that were involved in the music scene, UK music scene, whatever branch it was, whatever you know, like whether mm. it was grime, hip-hop, rap, jungle. Do you understand? Yeah, like, yeah. That's my mission, to get all of those people back because I find that when I get certain guests, people haven't heard about them in ages mm. or haven't heard what they're doing in ages. Not forgotten them, but just haven't seen them. There's some people that are interested in the scene and they don't know about these people. Mm. But if you ask the people that's on now, they'll tell you a story of these hidden gems and these people that I've been finding. Also, I've been looking to get the people that's behind the scenes. You Mm -hmm. know, the person behind the camera, the person behind the website, the DJ, the person that was playing the music. So Mm. that's a mad quest that I'm on at the moment. And I get a lot of rappers, but for me, it's more, it's big when I get someone that was on the other end of that, that we might not always see on the camera, but if you're in the scene and you're doing something, you probably had to cross paths with these person mm. and you know who they are and rate and appreciate them. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So I automatically thought of you. Thank you. It's yeah. an honour. Yeah, Still. I thought of you because I've been on your show. You're a... I've been on your show numerous mm-hmm. times and when I really thought about it and it's been over a, a period of time as well. It's like more oh, than yeah. 10 years. Uh-huh. Like... I've been, you understand that I've always had access to what your platform, basically. Mm -hmm. So I thought, do you know what? There's loads of other people that have been through that same process with you that you play week in, week out without fail. So I thought, you know what? It's about time that someone like yourself gets to come on and get the accolades and just get a big up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because there's people out there that appreciate you. So without me waffling on any further, like (laughs) what I normally do, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I am Sammy J, DJ Sammy J. Um, I do the Exposure Show every Saturday, 8 till 10 p.m. on the Big Bad Itch FM. Come on. Come on. (laughs) Come on. You must have had your tunes played on that stage. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, you you know about Itch FM. If you know about the underground, you know, like everyone wants to get to the the radio ones and all of these places and Mm. stuff, but you have to go through a level. There has to be... Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to be seen by these people first because they... All of the people that's on them channels, they scout. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And then you get elected to there and then labels and all mm. of this stuff. But there's a big scene going on with these integ- integral sounds and platforms. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, I thought it's only right we get someone like yourself on. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. Oh. All right. So, like, before I even, what's it called? I want to hit them with a who said just for the engagement, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. This is like, um, who said it's like, what rapper said this bar? 
Oh, God, what if I don't know it? <laughs> no, it's, it's not really for you, you know. OK. It's normally for the people at home. But if oh, you want to okay. have a go... OK, OK. But, yeah, who said? Let's see if they're paying attention. All right. I'm in the dance saying, selector, wheel up the dub. And if he don't, we start greasing, just done the club. I go home and pray Salah on my little rug, like Allah, when you please clean my dusty mug. Ooh. <laughs> Sounds like that's, some good bars, isn't it? That's ringing bells. <laughs> Feels like you know it, isn't it? I don't it? want to embarrass myself on air and say something would be wrong, so I hope not to They can do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Who said? Do you know what I'm saying? All right, so let's get into this then. Let's start from the beginning, yeah? OK. Um, tell us a little bit, like, paint a picture, like, Tell us a bit about yourself and that, like, where are you from? Um, I am from the lovely town of Crawley. Um, oh, everyone seems to know it somehow, usually for something bad, but like, yeah, um, it's just south of London. Um, like, my family, both sides of my family is originally from, like, south London, but I was born and raised in Crawley. I'm still based there, but anyone that knows me knows that I'm in London a bit too much still, um, because that's where the music is. So that's, that's where, that's where I'm going to be. But Crawley is where the family and the babysitting is. So I've got to be, uh, you know, in both worlds. Yeah. OK. Well, um, you, 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 what was happening in Crawley in terms of music uh, on your come up? Not much, um, to be honest, like. I just got into, like, there wasn't really anyone that got me into music, into hip-hop. That kind mm. of happened by my weird self. <laughs> like, just mm. listening to the radio and stuff like that. Like, mm. I suddenly heard, like, hip-hop and was like, what? This and is what poetry. Year? Sorry, what year? What are we talking oh, about, I'm going like... to be giving my age away now. I was no, quite like, young. Like, Probably, I think... We're in a time machine right now. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, OK, I, I used to... When I was very young, I vaguely remember, like, crisscross and stuff like that. Jump, jump I remember watching <laughs> Fresh Prince as well. Yeah. But I don't think I'd really clocked at that point that hip hop was a thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I would say probably the time I really realised and it all came together and I was like, ah, oh, this is this is a thing, if you know what I mean, it was probably mm. about 95, 96. OK. Yeah. Um, I was still quite young then, to be honest. Um, but that was just from kind of listening to the, the radio and stuff, like all the kind of kids at school were going on about certain tunes. And my parents didn't really play like commercial radio. Yeah. They were just into their own stuff. So I wasn't really listening to chart music. I weren't really into it. Yeah. And then so I thought I'd check it out, see what people were going on about. But I wasn't interested in that stuff they were going on about, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was interested yeah, in what like... What was going on in 95? What oh, would have been the I'm trying to think the first... MC Hammers or something, The first hip hop tunes I heard, though, was things like... It was things further down in the charts. It wasn't the number one stuff. It was like, you know, Nas, Biggie, kind of Tupac. Was, um, like, was that like um, Farside and them kind of guys? I, d I didn't hear them straight that, away. Yeah. I think the artists yeah, I first heard too. would have been like, so I think definitely great. Nas, Biggie, Tupac, Fuji's, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, also got very into R&B as well because it just had that... They had a little bit more depth to it, do yeah. you know what I mean? Just normal pop music just didn't Who's grab me. Who's some of your favourites in R&B? Oh, like Mary J. Blige, Mary, Faith yeah. Evans, you know, that kind of thing when I was first listening. Usher, like when he first came out. Brandy. Um, Bra absolutely, Brandy, Monica, you know. Yeah. All that kind of... I'm, I'm probably leaving someone out here, but like obviously I got into the American stuff first. The UK actually came quite a lot later. Yeah. Um, due to kind of not being in London, I suppose not having it happening actually around me, if that makes sense. I wouldn't mm. say I realised really that UK hip hop existed probably till like very early 2000s, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like I started to hear Garage, you know, back yeah. in those days. Um, as a teenager, I was kind of going to... So you got, you delved into that as well? Yeah, into okay, yeah, yeah I loved Garage. I feel like yeah, we kind of all did that, like you had a, yeah. it was like a melting pot in it, so you had... You didn't yeah. just have one genre of music that you stuck with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially when we were just like taking it in. So, yeah, I was listening to um, Bashment or mm. Ragar, as it was called them times. Um, jungle, a little bit of rap. Yeah. All sorts. Everything. And like with Garage as well, like this was before Grime existed. Yes, yeah. I'm that old. Um, it was before Grime existed and I would be like taping Garage off like pirate radio stations and stuff. Yeah. I'd be like <laughs> rewinding the bits. This is on cassette tape. Yeah. I'd be like rewinding to the bit where there was an MC or I'd be, or it'd be like regular songs. You know, when you get a garage song and there'd just be an MC for like 30 seconds yeah. on it. Yeah. I'd be like, keep rewinding that bit because I was listening to a load of American hip hop. Yeah. But the only UK voices I was hearing, hearing was, was that one 30 second verse on a garage track. Do you know what I mean? So that, I was just like, 
hearing a UK voice on a track just kind of did something to my brain. I wanted to hear that. Yeah, wanted to hear more. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I, I still can't believe some days that I have a show where people just come and spit straight bars and it's it's all mine. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what I always wanted back then. And like I kind of saw the emergence of grime was kind of around for that as in, you know, seeing it happen via kind of pirate radio and just tuning, learning the right places to tune in and stuff like that. Obviously, mm. One Extra came along, so I was listening to that as well later on. That wasn't straight away, obviously, but yeah. Give me I, some of the DJs from One Extra that you oh would have Oh my been... goodness, well, Sarah Love, everyone knows this about me. Sarah Love is like my absolute idol. Okay. Like, I loved her show because she just played the dopest, rawest hip hop. She mm. had UK as well as US, yeah. she represented for both. I don't know if it was that she was a female as well. I don't know if, that, mm. maybe subconsciously, I don't think it was a conscious thing, mm. but she was just my absolute like idol as a teenager. I was like, I, I didn't think I could be a DJ at the time, if that makes okay. sense. I had so much like reverence and respect for them. I didn't, I didn't see myself doing that actually. Yeah. I just really, really loved her show. I used to love Ronnie P and Skit's Original Fever because yeah. that was very like UK. Um, very UK orientated. Uh, Raz Kwame did a UK homegrown show as yeah, well. Yeah, okay, I used yeah, to love yeah, that. Yeah. I think that was on one extra. Obviously, two seven nine, yeah. Shorty Blitz and uh, Big oh, Ted, Big, Big Teddy Ted. Ted now. Yeah, but like, yeah. yeah, Shorty Blitz and Big Ted love their show. MK, I'm probably forgetting someone really Shorty important Blitz or something. And but... MK are now a duo now. Yes, it? yeah, but yeah. Be before it, they was it was Ted and Shorty. Yeah, yeah. On, so um, on I wasn't kids. as in tune, but I do know yeah, little yeah. ones and twos. But so like... I was, I was listening to all that, you know. Um, gradually, just from listening, you discover more. But it yeah. was very much just, just me getting myself into it and going deeper into mm. it, kind of, kind of see, by myself. So you're a teenager these times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you see, when you're listening to all of this, yeah, are, are the other kids at school? Not what are they gravitating like... to? Different music. I was not popular at school. Um, I was a total nerd, still am. Um, I just love the lyrical side of it. When I first heard hip hop, I was just like, this is poetry, what do you know? Like, yeah. I was like, people were talking really deep stuff and that's why my brain likes to be occupied. It likes lots of words. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, wow, this hip hop gets the most words in, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. does do that. And then I suppose I liked the R&B for the, just the kind of soul. It just seemed to have that bit more feeling than like, generic pop music if that makes any sense yeah, and yeah, I just yeah. I don't know like the whole kind of normal music or like even slightly cheesy party classics and that that just never clicked with me it's not a thing yeah. on purpose it can make my life quite inconvenient at parties sometimes but, I, um, but I just don't resonate with that it's yeah. always been well black music really yeah. for like Hip you know people are afraid yeah. to call it that these days but yeah. it, that's where it comes from isn't it yeah. so yeah that that has always just resonated with me and I don't know specifically why, but I guess, yeah, the feeling the and the rhythm, words. It? The, the words. feeling, the words, the rhythm, absolutely. Yeah, that, for some reason, that is the wavelength that I have been on since very young, and it's, it's stuck with me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, out of all of those people, who would you say, well, you said Sarah Love was your influence, isn't it? Have you got any other influences? Um, yeah, like, well, for whatever just reasons? like, I mean, that, I used to want to actually be like, at one point, I wanted to be a music journalist because um, I was okay. quite. In I was always into English and writing and stuff, and I just didn't see myself being a DJ because. Was there other journalists at the time? Oh my goodness! All the journalists. So I used to read all the magazines, you know, um, Hip Hop Connection, Vibe, The Source, Double XL, Touch, Rewind, <laughs> all of those ones. Yeah, <laughs> I ha I still have the biggest collection of them stashed what, the, at home. The, have you? Yeah, wow. like, you need to like, start taking some pictures of they them are, and sending them so I can put them on the thing. Cause yeah, that's the stuff I that... have the most massive collection that I refuse to get rid of of like hip hop so magazines from like Do early two thousand. Yeah, I had the poster that everyone had with all the rappers in black and white. You know that yeah. one. You know the <laughs> one I mean. Yeah, I had a big fifty cent poster, a big Nas yeah. poster. I'm trying to remember yeah. what I had. Like I try and keep my house a little bit more grown up now, but yeah, yeah. there's there's You've still some the hip hop stuff. You got the old me. school pictures of the yeah. room though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I had I had all that stuff, yeah. Um, and yeah, journalists. Oh my goodness, off the top of my head, I mean, there was there was Chantel Fiddy that used to write okay. for. Um, she was she was a UK journalist. Chantel, I remember yeah, her. I think I, she's standing out as well, it. maybe for being maybe maybe because she's female as well. I don't know. It wasn't a conscious thing, but I, I do remember reading her stuff. But like, 
I've got a book of ho at home of like um, hip hop journalism throughout the ages and stuff like that. So a lot of American writers like Nelson George, Dream Hampton, people like so that. You know your stuff, um, I, yeah, I used to want to be a music journalist, but to be honest, I, I got out of education and my brain had a bit of a meltdown and I didn't kind of have, at the time, I didn't have the kind of mental Where discipline. Where would you have gone to study to... You know what I'm saying? To, I mean, it's these just, days, it's, it's a self -taught these thing, days you can, I think you can actually study hip hop in certain universities. I think, yeah. I mean, that was not in my time. I just took it down the route of just English, basically, yeah. because I, I was good at that anyway. And I've always liked words. Got your and, own... and to me, like rappers are like the, you know, Shakespeare. I know it's a cliche thing to say, but all mm. the cliche, like the poets of the older days and stuff like that. That's what rappers now are doing. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but they're definitely. not getting the kind of, credibility and respect in the mainstream for it like yeah. but to me I'm just like these people were like dropping out of school or whatever you know but they're writing bars cleverer than you know the cleverest people I know in school do you know what yeah. I mean and yeah, that, yeah. that always fascinated me like what is what is intelligence do you know what I mean is it a load of grades or is it the fact that you can have no grades whatsoever but you can do that yeah. do you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah. some of the cleverest people I know haven't got a GCSE to their name or whatever yeah, yeah. but they're amazing writers so that always kind of fascinated me. And I was I was kind of the generation as well where like Akala was exploring the links between hip hop and Shakespeare and stuff. Yeah. And um, I remember seeing there was a actor and director. I can't remember what his name. It might've been, it might've been Patterson Joseph. I'm trying to remember his name, but like he jo did. Joseph Patterson, JP, jo Joseph Patterson. No, he was, he was like an actor. I'm sure his name was oh. Patterson Joseph, but I could be wrong. Mm. And he did a whole hip hop Shakespeare thing that was really, really interesting as well. I, I can't mm. remember if he like came to my school or something or if I saw it somewhere else. I'm trying to remember, but this is like really vague, way back memories. So yeah. I'm probably getting this wrong, but I was always, to me, like hip hop artists were poets. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and I just loved what they were doing with words and I was hooked from when I first heard it. And then when yeah. I discovered UK hip hop, just to re realize there was this whole scene and we'd had this rich culture of it since like the eighties or whatever. And I didn't know about it really till early 2000s, mm. just from, well, it was a coincidence actually. I used to just go to a record shop. I didn't have any equipment or anything at the time. I wasn't mm. buying vinyls or anything. Or I just record shop in Crawley. Yeah, yeah. Just to... well, there isn't even one there now, but just a local record shop in Crawley. I used to go in and buy like you know like the G Unit well, mixtapes. Do you remember what? It... Okay. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> yeah, them yeah, like yeah. bootleg Guess G who's Unit mixtapes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could get like a bootleg G Unit mixtape for like five pounds or yeah, something. Yeah. I was getting stuff like that, or there'd be like some R and B compilation that'd have really quite obscure stuff on it, not yeah. the stuff that was in the charts, which I really loved. You know, my car was the place to go if you uh, liked um, your music. What's you his know? name? Luke and all them man's, um, God, what's their name? Two Live Crew and all these guys. And yeah, all so them I was kind just getting shoes. all sorts of like, basically bootleg mixtapes from this, this vinyl store. And um, I think one day I picked one up and just looked grinding, interesting. Are you going there on your own? Yeah, I just, yeah. You're like, just going on your own. Got your I liked money. my hip hop mixtapes, you know, like. What, yeah, you see what, because that was kind of the answer to what the question. It would have been, what was your first ever CD? Oh. Rap CD that you bought. But it seems oh. like you was buying it from tapes. You was involved from the tape. Thing. Yeah, but I mean, I bought, I, I don't know. So it might I think even be your probably first... something Nas or Biggie or something like that would be like a maybe even a cassette. It's My cassettes cassette. are kind of died now. They, yeah. they I've, I might still have them in a box somewhere for old time's sake, but they're they're not working. <laughs> but yeah. um, I did have some cassettes. I can't remember the exact first one I bought. I think, do you know what? When I was a little kid, I might have got Michael Jackson Bad on, on cassette. I think that was yeah. probably my first yeah. cassette, actually. Yeah. The single of Bad, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I did like a bit of Michael Jackson, yeah. but this was pre-discovering hip-hop. His film do you know was what out, I mean? his film was out them times, um, I think. But yeah, like, I, I kind of remember getting, like, Biggie, Nas, Wu-Tang, Tupac, that kind of thing, Fuji's, Lauryn Hill's solo album, I remember having that. Those were some of the first CDs I was buying. Um, and then I got these, like, yeah, these G-Unit mixtapes when 50 Cent started getting big early 2000s. I was quite mm. into his stuff. Um, and then I picked up something UK kind of by accident. It was something really random. I can't remember. It wasn't even someone like that's that famous. It might have been like DJ White Coat or something like that. It was okay. some quite random thing. I don't even know where it came from, but I just saw it and thought something made me buy it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That looks yeah. interesting. And I'm trying to remember exactly what was on it, but I just remember hearing artists like, you know, Task Force, okay. For Life Cypher, um, Ty, Rest in Peace, um, yeah. Essa, you know, Skinny Man, all that so kind is, of so stuff. Just, just a CD with all this mad stuff in it. All of these and then people. I think I had like a low life CDs and like yeah. that, that I was starting to, I started to know what to look for because then my head was like, 
what UK does hip hop? I've been I've been rewinding that one garage verse the whole time. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah, and UK does hip hop. Do you know what I mean? And this was also about the time. This would have been early two thousand. So when you bought a garage compilation, you know, I'd have pure garage, whatever it was. Do you remember them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, this was when Wiley was like pay as you go crew and all that. Yeah. And then they'd started to delve into more like dark. Yeah. Ga dark garage kind of thing yeah, like that's when they started loved a bit of mc vapor yeah, that kind of stuff grime, yeah i knew all the mc vapor lyrics like i wasn't a rapper i never again maybe i could have been if i'd have had more so did you self belief ever try? no but i know the lyrics to ever, everything did you ever think of being a rapper like mm, i used to write poetry when i was very little like 10 11 12 kind of thing and then yeah but like no not really i think again because i had too much like reverence for people doing that i could mm. they were like my idols i couldn't see myself doing that but yeah i know the lyrics to absolutely everything so yeah. <laughs> technically so you, technically what's it called i think that, that i can't helped. sing but yeah. give me rap karaoke and a couple of drinks yeah. and maybe I'll... yeah that, like, <laughs> yeah. that just knowing the lyrics to all of these rappers yeah is what taught people how to know to rap just yeah your own words. i mean with the right encouragement maybe i could have done but have, as yeah. it just wasn't kind of on my radar that i could do that yeah. if that makes any no, sense you know what is this because most of the people that i've spoken to whenever i whenever they do something else other than rapping they usually have a story of that time when they was the secret rap rapper oh. but not everyone knew about them or mm. do you understand what i'm saying yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. then they moved on to yeah. Do the other stuff because they love music so yeah. much. You're gonna find you're gonna find a slot somewhere. Like I was always the DJ before I even thought I could be a DJ. I was the DJ amongst my friends, if that made yeah. sense. Like, and how did you become the DJ? Like my my car was the place to go if you wanted to hear really obscure underground tunes because okay. I was buying them off these so little you was a little DJ bootleg in your car already. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. if if we were just hanging out at someone's house at kind of party type thing. There wouldn't be someone there with decks and everything, but there would be me standing next to the hi-fi system. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I would be in charge of the music. Like, yeah. I would download stuff and put it on CDs. Like, I was being a DJ without realising I was without being a DJ, if that made it, any yeah. sense, because I still had too much respect for DJs to think that I could do that. And also, like, I wasn't good as mu at music as a subject at school. Do you know what I mean? I was quite... I was quite academic. I was, like, English and languages, history, that kind of stuff I was good at. But, like... <laughs> I wasn't good at music, so no one ever said, and I suppose because I was quite good academically, like my family thought I'd go down that route kind of thing. Mm. So there was no kind of, oh, go and do music. There was no encouragement in that direction. I wasn't good yeah. at like playing an instrument or something. So yeah. I never thought of myself as musical in that way until yeah. I just realised I knew tunes so well that you I could so mix much, them, yeah. if that makes any sense. And like, like I got into radio really before I learned to mix properly, but like yeah. actually some, okay. some people yeah, so that I, I used yeah. to do. So let's break that down. You know what? Oh. Do you want a drink? Sorry, I should have asked oh, you. Oh, yeah, I won't say no. That's yeah. it. Wagwan. That looks fun. Yeah. Wagwan. I've got some Wagwan. Wagwan. Big up, big up Wagwan. Go. Wagwan. Like, I need I'm some more like, Wagwan. I need myself. some more, man. They're running out, man. Come on. Come on, Wagwan. And this now he's going to try and get me rapping lyrics on here, isn't he? Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Listen, I'll give the guests one. They have to do at least 10 to 15 minutes of talking. And I know, yeah, they're ready now. You know them ones, they deserve a drink. I was <laughs> about to ask if you had a water, but I'll take no, a Wagwan. No, instead. Wagwan, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's cool. No, um, definitely. So, oh, yeah, what was it? How did I get into DJing? Yeah. Oh, mad story. So when I got out of education, basically, I did a degree in English because that was the closest thing to rap for me. So I'd just done a ton of Shakespeare and was quite happy with that. Thought I'd get into music journalism, but just got out of out of it all and my head just exploded and I just couldn't kind of know what to do next almost. And then um, I did like a course in radio. Um, oh, so like radio production kind of thing. Like I basically, I used to love listening to like One Extra and Kiss and Choice and things like that. And I thought I want to be involved in this scene. With what, but um, I what's the name? Love. What's her Sarah name? Love. Yeah. So you're, you, it made me think I want to be involved. That this is where I feel happy. This is what I love doing. I need this in my life, like properly. So my aim was to be involved. I wanted to be like a researcher or a producer for like mm. a radio show or something. Yeah. That was actually my goal. I wasn't really trying to grab the limelight like that. And I didn't even think that I could mix or anything at this point still. So I did this, basically I did a course um, at Westside Radio, which Westside. is still knocking about in the Ealing Southall no, kind of yeah, area. Big, them up, man. big up all them guys, um, especially Rude DJ and DJ um, Design because they, they helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, I basically did a course and um, at the end of the course, they so gave me a show. There's a course at the radio station. Yeah, at the radio station, yeah, in West London. Did they put um, on the course? Yeah, a friend, it was like a community thing. Um, a yeah. friend told me about it, who knew about it, because they were involved in the radio station. And, and where is it, in Ealing? Yeah. So you're coming yeah. from Crawley? Yeah, 
but I've, like I said, I've always been in and out in London for various things, yeah. family, friends, socialising, whatever. Like to me, that was that wasn't an issue. It wasn't you know? even an issue. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I got on it because you were probably it was some community thing. You're probably supposed to be from Ealing. Yeah, or something. yeah, that's I what I'm thinking. Know. You're probably meant to be from the flats. But meant to be from the flats. My friend was involved in the station that I just knew from a friend of a friend from like my mates' uni, basically. Big up Tim. Mm. Um, but yeah, was involved with Rest Radio. What was told it, like me an about the course. Radio station. Yeah, stuff. well, what? it was a community one, so okay. it was like community for that area, but it had all sorts of shows and. Basically, the course, I was just thinking about learning to be like a producer or a researcher or something like that. And I had this idea for a UK show, really, really showcasing underground UK hip hop bars, you know. And basically, they liked my idea so much that they gave me a show. And I became a okay. presenter, which was Just not like that. the plan. But yeah, big up West Side Radio, big up Rude DJ, especially for being my absolute mentor, my uncle of radio. Yeah. And DJ Design, because he actually taught me to mix. Yeah. So before that, I'd wanted to become a DJ by then. I was itching to kind of really learn. And um, it was him that actually gave me like proper lessons way, way back. Yeah. So, um, so what was yeah. your first um, ever show like? It was like on Westside as well. Yeah, it was on Westside and it's like it is now. It's the Exposure Show. They just showed you the... It was still called the Exposure Show. Yeah. Um, big Up Rude DJ, as I said, for putting me on to that. But it showcased UK music. Um, that was that was what it did. It did exactly what I do now. Yeah. Um, just on a different station. And then... Um, also got to big up my, my co-host um, that I met through Westside Radio, Dynamic Jen. She passed away in 2016. But and I think she that's was how I... Yeah. Rest in peace. Yes. Rest in peace. Rest like, in peace. I miss her every day. Man. She I, was like my sister. I, I feel like that's how I know you. Mm. I feel like I spoke to her yeah. on the internet around them times. And I'm thinking it's like 08 or something. Like, yeah, it just yeah, feels yeah. Like that's right. Times. Yeah. It's like 08 times. Yeah. No, it was. 100% you're right and, about that. And her telling me to come on the show... Yeah. And I remember it being you two. Yeah. Like a Yeah, a I mean, duo. we were a very interesting combination because we we were like sisters. We had days where mm. we didn't get on, we but yeah. we were we were best friends. Um How did you meet and like Through Westside Radio. She okay. was just already involved. She was like a kind of co host on a drive time show, I think. Okay. And then she kinda of migrated over to my show because I think she was just what the show needed. At that point, obviously I do a show by myself now. But at that point, I think I did need the co-host element, she if that was makes like any an sense. Yeah, before it was. We were the two sides labeled. of something. She, someone joked once that we were like if Sarah Love and Wendy Williams did a show together, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But like, and I love the compliment because I'm like, okay, if I'm the Sarah Love one, I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was very much. I knew about the. I don't know the more boom bap conscious side of it for want of a better word it's hard putting pigeonholes on it because it's not all the same but that was the music i've been listening to the skinny man the task force clash mm. and cough you know and some people crossed over between the two obviously mm. but that was what i knew she taught me about the more road rap side of things do you know yeah. what i mean she we interviewed k coke when he's in prison yeah. you know what i mean he literally phoned our radio show up from prison um we we gave him his first interview i believe something yeah. like that's certainly what i was told um we interviewed so there were like Joe Black, we interviewed um, you, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. so she taught me like Pound Sterling, people like that. I mm. hadn't heard of those people till she introduced me. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So she, you know, I owe that girl a lot. She taught me a lot because she, she contributed to making me who I am today. Like, I feel a little bit like when she passed, I took on a bit of that, that yeah. gen essence and got more active on the socials and stuff yeah. like that and thought, I'm doing this for Jen. I've got to put my... She was always telling me, get on the socials more because she was an influencer but before influencer yeah, was, she were was a thing. Definitely, she was an influencer. Definitely, definitely. Before, you know, before we knew what an I influencer was. I think I met was. her on, like, I would say I met her on Facebook. Yeah. Before I even met her in real life, I met her on Facebook. Like, her yeah. contacted me, yeah, I'm your hunt, did it, like... Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Isn't it? And like... she would she would moan at me because I was rubbish at socials. I mean, to be fair, I had a lot going on as well. I had a baby in that time when I'd literally just mm. started radio. That wasn't the best timing, pick up my daughter. <laughs> but yeah. um, do you know what I mean? I had a lot going on and I couldn't just do it as much as she did. Also, mm. I wasn't in London. But also, I was quite reluctant to be on socials. Like, I just... Mm. You know, Facebook got invented when I was a teenager. I didn't want it. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to go and uh, be friends with all these people from school that I've just managed to avoid for the last yeah, few yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Anyone I want to be friends with, they're in my circle now. Yeah. Now I'm the other way around. Unpopular opinion, but I love social media because, yeah. um, you know, that's how I know when you've got a weird niche special interest. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's yeah. how I know friends that are into the same thing, and that's how I network. So, you know, mm. and that's my platform for like being me. 
So yeah. my family don't yeah. have to deal with my extra personality all day. Yeah. I can put it out there on Instagram so the, instead. So the people you know that I mean? already know because you and already appreciate yeah, you and you exactly. understand what I'm saying. So I owe that to Jen because she was the one that nagged me, get on social media, you have to promote yourself. Because there's me just thinking if I put great tracks together and did my show yeah. every week, it just kind of yeah. would would come out of nowhere. Yeah. And I I don't know, but she she and she was good at getting the, the yes, the and she taught it. me about the the kind of other side of UK hip hop mm -hmm. because I just didn't know about all these people, and yeah. like there's still people that don't know about people from the kind of different sides yeah, of it as well. You said it. You said like the more um boom bap yeah yeah. So see to me because there's a lot of disagreements going mm. on. I don't know when this mm. is going to come out if it's still mm. the arguments are still going on, but the arguments is usually like who started road rap and mm. who was this and who was that. I don't know. Like I don't think one person can have the answer. You need about five yeah. people. Yeah, and there's and, people that cross over yeah, as well. In all different like you need people that grew up around the time to know what they was listening to mm. for them to be able to say no what well, I didn't yeah. cross this and then the rappers you need them do you get what I'm saying mm. it's not just one person that can say this but we can all have a I don't know how to explain it man but you said um, boom bap to me that's hip-hop yeah and it's hard to I don't like categorizing it like that but it's better than saying conscious yeah. rap because not all of it's conscious yeah, do you know what I mean rap, like yeah. but, so I don't I don't really know what to call it but boom bap seems like the closest thing but see rap how do you see rap what I is mean, rap to you well rap is the act of you know rhyming with words or whatever but like I know what you mean you're separating them like one's hip hop one's rap no, I know, no, I, no, no 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 I, at first I did think mm. that but then I realized what you're talking about man you, you come a, if I s sit in front of someone that's knowledgeable mm. they're going to rip me to shreds with that me saying <laughs> something stupid like that no hip hop is the the culture hip hop is the whole thing but I never mean like rap road rap in a, a derogatory way like I didn't know as much about it just from not being from the the roads of London yeah, yeah. um Rapping but I love to hear it because it's people telling their stories mm. Biggie was a road rapper do you know yeah. what I mean and Biggie's yeah. like my, literally my favorite yeah. rapper yeah. Yeah, yeah so like they're just telling their stories you know what I mean and, and if someone's lyrics have just got no substance and they're just glorifying a load of you know, yeah. not good stuff. I'm not going to be as into it. Something's got yeah. to be lyrical to interest me. Yeah. But that can be lyrical yeah, on that's either what, side you know of what? things. More than likely that is when you say that they, that's more like, that would probably go into gangster rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't it? When they're just glorifying stuff because yeah. it's the actual people. But even the, the gangster rapper. rappers, were they really glorifying, you know, Mob Deep or whatever? They're just re reporting what's going on. Biggie, they're yeah, just reporting yeah, what's going on. Yeah, it depends how they're doing on. it to us, yeah. I suppose. There's, there's gangster rappers and, as in the gangsters rapping. Mm. So then yes, he's talking about yes. his stories of what he's done. Yeah. But them times, you couldn't be the gangster rapper unless it was actually true. Yeah. Because we would have heard about the stories ah, other than... Yeah, the, yeah. We don't need to... We're not even listening to the music until we hear the stories. The stories are already ringing around. Mm. So we've heard about you and your area and mm. your so-called... You understand? So when you do this rap now, it's like, yeah, man, he's telling the truth. So that means you're the... Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It's the exactly, you've got to back it up. But the people... I wouldn't call myself a gangster rapper. I was a road rapper. Mm. And, like, I, road rappers are not necessarily, like, doing as much as the gangster rappers. The road rappers are narrating yes. a story. Yes. So I'll tell your story. I'll tell my environment story. Mm. Do you understand? As, and then add a bit of me in there. Yeah. Do you get what no, I'm saying? No, no, 100%. And I've just, that's what I've always been interested in. Words, stories, real, hard-hitting, real stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I learn about history and politics and you know race issues in america and here and whatever through like tupac and stuff do you know what i mean i hadn't even done that in history yeah. yet but i was a 10 year old listening to tupac yeah, you already and know, i was just like, on a yeah. deeper level to like <laughs> changes listening to changes yeah, and, stuff and like and, and even his oldest do you know what i mean it's life worth living Should i just I and to me and i was like okay <laughs> i resonated with that music okay i'm not i wasn't a black man in america obviously but, but i felt like an outsider because i was a bit of an outcast at school I, I was the outcast of my school. <laughs> Do you know mm. what I mean? I really felt like an outsider. I felt different my whole life. And mm. the weird thing is that, yes, these people that had a very different life to me, mm. they resonated with me. I felt something with them, mm. even though, you know, <laughs> I was a little nerdy white girl getting bullied at school. But that's the people that mm. spoke to my what was going on in my heart at the mm. time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's more about I'm um, relating. It yeah, doesn't matter, 100%. like, you don't have to look like someone to no, relate with their, no, their struggle or their stories. And, like, I just felt I mean? that outsiderness. And also that kind of, it gave you, and I liked the way that in, being clever was cool. Like, I was always kind of bullied for being a bit of a nerd because mm. I, I did get good grades and stuff, do you know what I mean? There shouldn't be something to be ashamed of. That's what mm. I tell my kids. But, like, and I think it has got a little bit better these days, a little mm. bit with kids and stuff. But 
hip hop made it cool to be clever because yeah. you're being clever with words. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I was like, I, I like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. It's cool. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying, yeah. No, definitely, man, it lets you express yourself and, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hip-hop is for anybody that has ever felt something. You can make a rap not, song yeah. about love, you can make a rap song about how broke you are, you can make a rap song about how rich you are, you can make... Rap isn't just one thing, despite the mainstream wanting to kind of portray it as one thing yeah. and still trying to do that how many years later, do you know yeah. what I mean? But, like, hip-hop's for anybody that's ever felt anything. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Anyone can write a rap. And any story you tell there's someone else out there that's going through the same mm. thing. Do you get what I'm saying? So 100%. you're always helping because they yeah. just don't know the answer. or they. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're putting it in words. All... It's, it's good to talk about struggle and difficulty and real life experiences because people can relate to that and it can really help people. It can really help yeah, people. 100%. Yeah, 100%. It helps the person themselves if they're getting it out there. And the amount of songs I've listened to when I've been feeling really down about something and it's just you it's relate just and it helps you... Yeah, it helps kind you of think you're you not the only one like, feeling lets that. Lets you know that you're not the only person. Yeah, hundred percent. It's not just 100%. me. Like you know what I mean? No, definitely. Music has a big impact. So me. just to me, and it, and it always baffled me when I was at uni as well that like the thing that most students were into was kind of indie rock, kind of like that kind of soft rock indie type mm. stuff. I don't even know. But I'm like, really fascinates me that all these supposedly super clever people aren't into rap because it's just mm. so clever. It gets the most yeah. words in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That really, that really fascinated me. Like there was a hip hop scene, but um, you know, the majority of, of your typical student was into a certain type of kind of so, so rock this, music. Um, you're talking about uni, yeah? Yeah. This where is the uni? Um, is it I'll, still in Crawley? No, no. I went to Cambridge. Wow. You didn't say that. You just said uh, you uni. Well, you asked you, me where my you know, uni was. You, just, you know what I mean? Like, you're just adding that now, like, oh, uni, oh, yeah, Cambridge, sorry. Like, yeah. I don't know anyone else that went Cambridge. That's what I'm saying. So that's yeah, brilliant. well, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, it's a blessing and a curse because then people were like, oh, why aren't you a brain surgeon or something like that? And it's like, because I did English, <laughs> not, being, <laughs> not being a doctor. Yeah. But yeah, no, I went, uh, like, there was a hip hop scene there. That's actually where I learned a lot more about the kind of boom bap conscious UK side of things I discovered even more artists there because some of my friends were into it some of them came to perform there there was a bit yeah. of a music scene there whereas Crawley just did not have a hip-hop scene anyone mm. that's been from Crawley and done music has got out and moved to London apart yeah. from me <laughs> I'm name still debating some, name some um Amy True Amy True okay mm. she's she's the my girl from Crawley okay. um she's now London based and that is very good for her and she's doing amazingly well I see her in Clapton but yeah she's originally from I Crawley thought, I, I hope she won't mind me baiting I her out like that <laughs> no 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 she I has told people she's from Crawley I'm not baiting her out but no mm. she she grew up in Crawley um we didn't know each other as like little kids but like late teens early 20s we Once we, we knew, connected music, over yeah. music we just had friend of a friend and there weren't that many people that did music and we we knew each other like that but um she, yeah she's doing very very well in London and yeah that, but yeah I think she does talk about originally being from Crawley and everything but yeah anyone that's done music like that there's not a massive amount of artists that have come from Crawley but I said Amy is the main one that's my generation that I know yeah. and they get out okay. it's, it's understandable yeah. I can see why they do it because there's just not a lot of of massive amount of culture there yeah. do you know what I mean so all right so you're you're DJing, you're doing, you've got your show at Westside. Okay, we're at Westside Point now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, how many, like, how long was you there for? Um, hang on, I'm just trying to think. Couple of years? Couple of years. Um, couple of years. Basically, the reason um, Jen and I left was because the station shut down temporarily. I think it was, like, the Conservative government got in in, like, 2010 mm. and that cut off funding for things like community radio um, and they were without our premises temporarily. Okay. Um, we were just basically, we were a bit disloyal and didn't wait around. Yeah, <laughs> um, just so we mix, just, yeah, mix. exactly. Like, big up all the West Side originals because they're still on West Side now and doing yeah. big things and I've got so much love for my West Side people. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to big all of them up because I forget someone, but yeah, big up all of you guys, you know who you are. Um, but yeah, West Side's still going strong and everything. So, so they obviously so found a new premises, but um, we, we just hopped onto another couple of stations momentarily um, yeah. One in Brixton, one in Stratford, but these were really, really temporary, just a few months. Okay. And then we got a place on HFM in 2013. Okay, and where was HFM based at this time? Um, 2013, but yeah. HFM yeah, has been going for since how long? Uh, they, it started... they was on the. Um, okay, cool. This is the things that I know. Right. They were. Um, they were originally on the dial. Yeah, 105.15, I think. Okay, and then they stopped after a certain amount yeah. of time. Yeah, so basically, I hope I've got my history right. I should have checked with this with my boss man before. Big up the boss man of it, yeah. Um, 
I'm not going to say his name, but yeah, big up my boss. <laughs> he's great. He's a great guy. Yeah, um, at least he's watching. Yeah, I'll be, you better be watching. <laughs> um, but no, Itch um, started, I'm pretty sure, in 2000. Yeah, definitely in year 2000. Um, I obviously was not on it back then because I'm so young. <laughs> but um, I would listen here and there um, if I was able to be in London or something like that. Mm. I was aware of Itch FM, but I couldn't listen all the time due to where I lived and everything. Um, so obviously I wasn't on it back then. I think it ran from 2000 to 2007 before it got kind of locked off for being Lasted a pirate. seven years. Um, but then it came back. Um, as an internet station as it an is now. Internet station. Um, I've been on it since 2013. So that's when it came that's back. When it ca yeah, I think it might have been 2012. It was doing like some broadcast, yeah. but it properly, properly came back in 2013 and I've been on it, it since then. It lasted for seven years yeah. and then was off air for a little bit. About five years. Yeah, I think so. Back. I mean, I don't want to get in trouble with the boss. They might have been doing mm. a few little things in the meantime kind of yeah. thing, but it definitely came back. I think they started doing things in 2012 and then really, really went for it with a ton of live shows and everything. Yeah. Summer 2013, me and Jen started. We yeah. just kind of had an interview with them because Jen knew everybody and knew yeah, someone that like was involved. She knew who she could yeah, bring to the... exactly. And I was just, I couldn't believe it when she said we got an interview with Itch FM because I knew from being from that side of hip hop, if you know what yeah. I mean, Itch FM was like legendary to me. Massive. You know what I mean? And I still have to pinch myself sometimes that I'm on there and I've been on there for more than 10 years now. Um, and yeah, it's a great place. Do you know what I mean? I've got a big up all the DJs because, you know, they're like my big brothers. They're really, really good guys. They really, really yeah. support me. We've got a really good who, team Who was people. on HF? Like, who was, like, doing what when you got there? Well, when I got... I mean, there was some of the originals, like, Bigger Man, he's still doing it, got a big up Bigger Man. Um, the, the, you know, some of the older ones have moved on and doing other things now. Um, but DJs come and go, but we've always got a good crowd of people. It just yeah. seems to... It really seems to just gravitate good people. So yeah. um, we've got, you know so many good djs right now yeah. and and there might be more to come in the future because yeah. we're still doing big things because we just want to rep for real rap real do you know rap, what i mean we want to keep people, doing exactly because they need a platform like yeah. all the itch djs rep hard for uk they also play you know underground us stuff as well and then obviously i do my thing with the just uk show basically and because who I... else does that though like i mean you like... know you're a gatekeeper <laughs> like without like you might not want to be the gatekeeper mm. but you are a gatekeeper because you're given uh you know what i'm saying like you're given the outlook to people there's a community of people that follow you yeah but you can introduce that new person that you might yeah think and i love to do that because to me like i've got so much respect for the greats and the originals and the people doing it in the 80s the 90s the early 2000s that were kind of the first ones to do it but there's people making music now that are still good the scene isn't just like some people think the scene is like over or something yeah just because certain people haven't made an album in a few years or whatever yeah. and like these no are my you... favorite artists as well so this is not yeah. me saying anything about those artists these are my yeah. favorite artists that i grew up listening to but doesn't mean no one else isn't any good just because they're not them do you know what yeah. i mean and i think there can be a bit of a mentality sometimes some of the people I play and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to call some of these people friends. Do you know what I mean? So talented. It just absolutely blows my head off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, and I just try and rep for like MCs, producers, just everybody. There's so much talent in this country. And I feel like the way the mainstream record labels are set up and stuff, who else is going to give them what they deserve? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're not... If you're a little bit older, a little bit not glamorous enough, a little yeah. bit unwilling to compromise on what your lyrics are about, you're not going to get that you're that deal, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Um, yeah. So, but that music needs repping. You know, hip hop is important because it tells stories. You know, yeah. it is it is really important for the future for for the youth. You know, it's it's it holds authority to account. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What music challenges directly speaks about politics and stuff like that more mm. than hip hop does? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think part of that is the nature of it and where it's come from and everything. But also just because you can do that with a lot of words. Yeah, it's harder yeah. to do that, you know. Yeah, you can but... put something out and it has to be heard. Yes. I, I, I'm not an MP though. I don't know no. I don't know the rules to get into Parliament and no. to like do all of this making a bill. But I do know how to rap about it yes. and put it to a song to my um, conglomerate, to my yeah. party. <laughs> yeah. That will listen to me happily. Exactly, exactly. You know I mean? And I just think, you know, creativity is so important. Yeah. Speaking the truth is so important. Um, speaking about lots of different situations that aren't necessarily suitable for the charts the way they're putting it mm. at the moment, you know. And think, don't get me wrong, things have got better with regarding UK hip-hop getting in the charts yeah. and stuff like that. There's some... I never thought I'd... I remember, like, 
Stormzy getting to number one in the charts, and I never thought mm. I would like really like a number one song yeah. that was from the UK and okay, everything. Do you know what, what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, there was that saying. era. There was that era where they compromised too much. I'm yeah. sorry, but they did. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Certain artists songs, were really yeah. making just cheesy just, songs, yeah, yeah. and I was just like. I should be happy that UK voices are getting that far, yeah. but they're really but making like the songs some are like funny yeah. song to get that number one. They're they're compromising too much, like. Yeah. But nowadays, now you know, you can make that song that you want. Yeah, like, but or there's it's stuff. More likeable. There's anyway. stuff that's never going to get in the charts because a is too political, b is too intellectual for for the public. You know, yeah. I forget that sometimes because I hang out in this field of UK rap, which is actually a load of really really intelligent people because yeah. they've got to be to be right in yeah, those bars understanding bars. those yeah, bars yeah. do you know what i mean like that you know i hang out in those circles and i forget that normal people just don't get that do you know what i mean yeah. if i'm playing rap in my car and there's someone that isn't into it and not from that they world they're just gonna be like hear. i can't hear what he's saying they don't it's even too know fast. What it's too much do you know what I mean? it's too much to understand if they hear one line they're not going to hear the other five lines after. Yeah, yeah and like my brain just goes at a million miles an hour basically i can listen to something 140 talking about some really deep stuff in Jamaican patois and understand mm. it because and my brain is on that level and I like to, to hear that yeah. because it, my brain likes to be busy. You get bored if something's slow, yeah. do you know what I mean? I it's got to have some content. Song, yeah. It's got to have some content. Yeah, I can listen to a song and if I like that song, see the next, see like when I reload it, I know about eight bars. Yeah. I yeah. already know yeah. eight bars or at least the ending of the, I know things from the song because my brain just, what's it called, captures it quickly. Do you get what I'm saying, innit? So, it's either you got it or you haven't. Yeah. Isn't it? Like when you're into something like that, then yeah, we yeah. nerd out, isn't it? <laughs> At, oh, 100%. I'm nerd the biggest nerd and, and I just like, I need to keep doing what I'm doing because I believe it is important. I can't be. Most definitely. I just used to think when I was sitting there listening to shows, recording a bit where someone was rapping or whatever, or just listening to, you know, I just thought I can't be the only person with this taste in music. And that's yeah. why I do my show to just, there's other people out there that are going to like these artists but haven't heard of these artists. Yeah. Um, and they've got no way of if mainstream isn't pushing it to them yeah. or just even their own platforms isn't pushing it to them. And I'm just, I suppose I've just never cared about what people think of me. So, like, not necessarily in a negative kind of screw you kind of way, yeah. but like, I'm usually quite nice to people. But yeah. I just mean, I don't care how many likes or views. And people mm. have said to me before, like, oh, you play anything and you, you don't care. And, like, there's other DJs that will only do it if you've got so many likes, so many views. And this yeah. is grown men DJs, whatever. And I'm like, I haven't really thought about it like that. But I just play what I like. Simple yeah. as that. Some, yeah. Something that I feel deserves deserves the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And some of the best music hasn't been signed, hasn't got a million likes, hasn't got a million views, isn't being made by a 20-year-old. It might be being made by a 30-year-old or 40-year-old or something. Yeah. But that doesn't oh. stop it from... Just because it's not glamorous enough to be put in the mainstream does I'm not saying. stop it from deserving mm. some kind of platform. I wish I could do more in a way and make, make the platform <laughs> yeah. bigger for it because I really believe in this music, you know? Yeah. It's talking about the truth. It's encouraging creativity, intellectual activity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and also just like you know the production as well is is really good mm. like we've got really really talented people in that area as well so yeah. like the uk has just got so much talent and other countries like the us is waking up it is featuring mm. uk artists and stuff um on the mainstream kind of level but also on the scene i'm in kind of level as well yeah. like i know artists like uk artists that have been working with big american artists or like more underground american artists that are big as well if you know yeah. what i mean like Give us like um some of your favourite artists you've worked with? You interview uh, what, that I've interviewed? Yeah, oh, yeah. wow, am I allowed favourites? I know so many well, people, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, but you know what I'm like, saying? Because I know some of the names. like, oh, that, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Go well, on. as I said, I try and really, really focus on the underground. Mm. But, I mean, um, people that... I, oh, if I start bigging people up, I'm going to forget people, no, do you know matter. what I mean? Just give a few, but, like, know. I don't know, someone that I've always supported over the years, Genesis Elijah. OK, um, yeah, yeah. He was one of the first people I interviewed, but also he's someone I'm still in touch with now. He's always gives me the time of day, even though he's, you know, doing mm. much more. He's finally mm. getting a bit of the success he deserves, doing a bit mm. of drum and bass stuff as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but he, he's just straight hip hop lyricism is, is something else, you know. So yeah. he's just one person I would single out. Um, um, I'm just trying to think, like, because there's so many and I really, any artist, if I have played you, I'm rating your music. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. if I know you as a person and I mess with you, that means I, you know, I mm. think you're a good, good person. But just any artist I play, I, I really, really believe in. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, I'm just thinking about as someone who's finally getting to do a bit better, even mm. though he's, you know, not 20 years old, let's yeah. say. I'm not going to beat him out on age, but yeah. he's not not 20 years old. And then there's, you know, there's people like Got Big Up Ragazuli Rebel. He's just the okay. most versatile artist that's been doing it for time. Um, and he just keeps going. He says he's going to retire, but keeps going, do you know what I mean? You've got like, the gems. You have to keep dropping them, yeah, man. Yeah, and like just, just people, them, people that have given you know, giving me the time of day, you know, like bigger artists that I used to listen to, like like Kashmir has come on my show and like giving me the, the time of day for like his work. And you, you know what I mean? And like, like big up skinny man, he listens to my show. He mm -hmm. will literally message me saying he's locked yeah. in. Yeah. Big supporter of HFM. So like, yeah, and I try and, I, I try and start my show off with a couple of classics most weeks, yeah. but I get so much current stuff. New stuff. My stuff. show is two hours of basically new All UK. New. Yeah, I mean, some of it isn't always new that week but it's basically it's from this, yeah, this year yeah, yeah. this few months yeah. sometimes i'll just I randomly to some of the shows and stuff and that yeah. yeah and i think to myself i know i'm in there but i'm gonna listen to the whole yeah, thing no. it's just one of them mm. things it's like there's no point trying to just find your song I yeah feel, <laughs> i feel like that's self yeah i feel like that's selfish oh, that's of me it. i swear i feel like that's selfish of me just trying to think oh, maybe like skipping through the songs it doesn't mm. make sense do you get what i'm saying yeah. so what i do is i let the whole thing play and then i hear bare songs that i think well i've never heard of any mm. of these people there are ever. so many talented people out there like they've got um, bangers dropping yeah, no, exactly. Like, there's people out there, like, I've got big up DK. She's put out 13 albums working on her 14th. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Work. they deserve that recognition because they've got talent. As you know, she's end of the week UK champion. Deserves that acknowledgement. Do you know what That's I mean? Work. Like, and, and the mainstream isn't going to acknowledge that just she's because of like people not being <laughs> as as marketable for whatever reason, whether that's the content of their lyrics, what their image, whatever people deserve a platform, you know? And as, like I said, I wish I could make it bigger in a way. Like, and, and maybe I'll be able to, I don't know. But That's like, it. I ain't compromising though. That's the thing, you know, anywhere yeah. I go, I have to be able to bring my brand of music with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Your like, style, isn't it? That is what I do. And whether it's to my detriment or not, I'm not going to compromise on that. So. Yeah, I just checked my questions. Oh, how many have now. we covered? <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot. Okay. We've done quite okay. a lot. But I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a good one for you. Go have on you seen um, Supercell? Supercell. No, I don't get time to watch much TV. I really don't. Okay, you're like, just in that world. I, 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 I run like my that. own business and have two kids. Like, I'm like that. Literally. I'm in that world. I, I watch the internet. I don't I watch bet. TV. Yeah, same. But I was not forced. My son said, no, Super Soul, mm. Super Soul. So I thought, oh, let me just watch this. I'm, I'm vaguely aware of I what it's about. Yeah, I um, downloaded, what's it called? Um, what's it? Netflix. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. I got a good soundtrack, Netflix, right? Yeah, and got it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. actually really good. And it's only six episodes, so you can, like, take oh, it in. Oh, well, like, maybe if I have a... People don't believe me that I don't stop. I really don't have a break. Part of it's because I can't manage time properly, but that's yeah. a whole other story. And, and <laughs> what's it called? In it, like, got a slow attention span as well. That's what I've got. So I can't really watch things for too long unless I actually mm. want to watch it. That's why I watch the internet, because I can... Yeah, I tend to just watch things like... If I'm going to sit down and just eat my dinner or something, I'll watch one of your interviews or yeah, something rather yeah, than yeah, watch yeah. a whole program or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. something that you don't have to always look at you can just listen yeah. to in the background i watch your interviews or big up blade you know i might yeah, well, tune yeah, into a 521 well, or man. whatever do you know yeah. what i mean like so i i and plus i live in my own little hip-hop bubble I, I don't get involved in mainstream tv yeah. that much if right. there's a hip-hop documentary you know on then you'll get me on it i was gonna ask <laughs> like, you a question on it go on in. if you don't know it it doesn't matter okay but actually, let me still ask Go, you. You can actually. try me. Yeah, what yeah, is it like? What would be your superpower or something? Uh, <laughs> I can't, it, it would have been telepathy. Give me a hand slap. <laughs> <laughs> telepathy. Just, that's one of your powers already because you just mm, read my oh, mind. Oh, I that's... always know what's going to happen in something. If I do watch a film or something, I can yeah. work the plot out yeah. from the start. So trust if me. you was in Super Soul um, Series 2, because mm. that's what they're filming now, mm. and they called you, we need a um, DJ. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So you're going to play yourself. What? powers would what two powers oh, would you have well yeah telepathy is a good one um i don't know i think i have superpowers of knowing a lot of lyrics like <laughs> my brain retains a lot of information it never has the useful information <laughs> yeah it like i will forget like i'll know when someone's birthday is right i know everyone in yeah. my family's birthday all my friends birthdays i could recite them off now won't remember to get them a card and a present and message them happy yeah, birthday yeah, on the right day but i know day, when their birthday is you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. like so i can remember like lyrics to everything lots of i'm good with words basically words yeah. are my superpower yeah um or just um selecting the tunes is that superpower <laughs> <laughs> can that be a superpower yeah. i reckon they kill you <laughs> being off. the being the best tune selector i reckon yeah. they kill you off my series three <laughs> <laughs> You need some superpowers that can defend yourself <laughs> and defend the crew. I can clash them. I can clash them with the tunes, though. 
<laughs> play the music and mesmer mesmerize them. Yeah. It? Like, yeah, I can baffle them with the lyric lyrical uh, intelligence <laughs> of my uh, my UK hip hop friends that send me their extreme underground music. <laughs> yeah. That that would be my superpower. No, Being that's able cold. to uh, baffle people with tunes <laughs> they never heard before. No, that's cold, you know. <laughs> All right, let's Spelling's see. my superpower. I can spell anything, man. I'm good at spelling. Don't, I don't know how no, useful no. that is for like battling people or whatever, but yeah. I'm really good at spelling. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was going to think of a word, but I'm not good at spelling myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's jump to the next one then. All right. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm, do I need some of this for this? Yeah, this is a scenario. <laughs> this is one where you have to, like... Okay. Yeah, it's a couple of decisions. Okay. But, like, because I know you're knowledgeable, you have a reason why you okay. took this path. And any of these paths okay. are all credible and all visible. They're all good. It's just what path would you take? Okay. So this one's, like... It's like a golden era of scenario, Go on basically. In. Go on in. I'm so intrigued. I'm gonna give you three questions, yeah. Okay. You're a DJ. I am. You're a DJ in real life. I am. But forget this DJ that you are. <laughs> this is like a up and coming. Well, then you're an up and coming okay. DJ, okay. and you haven't taken the path that you've taken. Okay. 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 You get a job, at a radio job, um, offer. Okay. Yeah. Um, you check your it's messages. Yeah, well, you check your message. Remember, you got the HFM one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this these messages are like a, the other messages, basically. Mm. So you got a message from um, DJ Semtex. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. like early two thousands. Yeah, Semtex. and he's saying, um, I want you to do like an internship on, okay. come and work with me at um, Radio One Extra mm -hmm. on my show. Okay? Oh yeah, I did love his show. I forgot to be him. Oh, I yeah. like Semtex show. Cool. Um, so then you check it. Oh my gosh, another message. You look now, you see Shorty Blitz and Big Ted. Mm. They're saying, come over, Kiss FM. Mm. We'll show you how to mm. polish up your skills or whatever. You understand okay. what I'm saying? You look again, you say, oh, my gosh, there's another message. Look, it's Jenny Francis, Choice FM, mm. saying, come down. Like, and I like your prospects. Where are you going? Because you can only oh, go to one. Oh, that is really hard, right? Because they're all good DJs. I know. Um... So you're going to make it. Don't worry. It you're going to make it either way. It, it doesn't yeah. matter where you go. You're going to make it. Isn't it? It's um, just where you Do you know go. what? I just, I've got a reason for it. I'm, I'm going to go with the Shorty Blitz one. Okay. Because I know him and he's a really nice guy. Yeah, but <laughs> like... you've got to have a better reason than that. Like, you've got to have a better reason. Well, he's a very good technical mixer as well. Like, do you okay, know what I mean? So to watch him, actually, to be fair, Semtex is, and he does it all as well. But, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? It's, um, oh, that's a tough one because I they were all stations that I listened to as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm going I'm to take Shorty. Shorty. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair it's enough. My mentor. You can be my mentor. Teach me stuff any day. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. So now, you get a job offer off okay. the strength of working. You okay. know, like you get another job offer, and they're saying basically it's you can be a DJ mm -hmm. at Jump Off, okay, or a DJ at Deal Real. Oh. Now, obviously, <laughs> Jump Off we know was like a massive. Club, it was massive, mm, innit? Mm. Deal Real was more of a shop based, yeah, thing, if yeah, I'm not record, mistaken. record store but vibes kind of When thing. I hear the stories of Deal Real, mm. I hear, oh, you could have been there and saw, um, like Kanye West could have been there one week, yeah, and then next week it could have been Cassidy, and then you might see Skinny Man, and then you might see, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So they're both big, yeah, no, that's you're giving me difficult ones because I yeah. do love to rock a club, you know, mm. like, but. I don't know, the deal real thing maybe because that just speaks to my heart from the real hip hop purist side of me, do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. I know I know Sarah Love was involved with Deal Real, she's like, I've said yeah. my idol. Yeah. Uh, very lovely person as well, puts yeah. up with me being a total fangirl. So yeah, yeah. pick up Sarah Love. Yeah. But um yeah, okay, I'm gonna take the deal real. Deal real. Because it's just okay. what my heart's saying. But, oh, okay, yeah. cool. So now you're you're flying now, isn't it? So okay. you're at Deal Real, you're there every week. That's how it was running it. Like yeah, it yeah. Every, So right. you're there every week now. Now you've got artists hollering at you. Mm -hmm. So you've got four artists on the come up. Okay. Like four different entities all hollering at you, thinking, like, I need you to be my mm. personal DJ mm. so I have that deal real mm. connection. Do you understand? Okay. So they can yeah. go and perform. So you look in your DMs. Well, it's not even DMs this time. It's <laughs> Facebook. It's yeah, yeah. messages. Or MSN whatever. Messenger or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you check it out now. Um, And it's... MF Doom. Ooh. Another message. Skinny Man. Another message. The Foreign Beggars. Another message comes through. Oh my gosh, there's four messages now. It's Task Force. You can only take one of these. Oh man, you're making that really hard. Yeah, really, really hard. It's like... Um oh, man. 
fan. I, I mean, I definitely go UK. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Doom fan, and he's technically mm. UK because he was mm. born here and died here, I believe. But um, I'm a big Doom fan. But oh man, well, that's really tough because they're all UK artists that I listen to. Like mm. that's all. They're all the same generation as well. You can't give me. You can't do that to me. That's what I'm saying. Um, they're all on the come up. So you got to pick I know. one. I um, know. You got to pick one. Oh man, that's that's hard. Um, I've got to say Skinny. Skinny. Yeah. 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 He's a good guy and just a sick lyricist. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I would, I would be his DJ. Yeah. I kick DJ Nasser out of the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, listen, for the people at home, we just, you know what I mean? Like, would she, well, of course she's going to make it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you've got skinny man, you're at deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're definitely going to make it. But I just wanted to make sure, you know what I mean? Like, is that the correct path she should okay. have taken? Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or is there a stronger path you think you lots at I do thing? tend to take the difficult road a lot no, of time. I feel like that's... That's just, yeah, I'm programmed to do that yeah, for some reason. You're so. due to be here in the next 10 years, definitely. Most There's a definitely. lot of things I could have done better, but at the end of the day, I think you're where you're supposed to be and the timing is the timing that it is, you know. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned this as well. You see, deal real, I wanted to put like a little bit, not their history, but you know, like I want to sound like I know stuff. Mm. So I did some research. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I wasn't there, by the way. I would have liked to have been. Yeah. I was vaguely aware of it, but it was kind of, you know, I wasn't in London all the time like yeah. that. This is what mm. I found out about Deal Real. There was a renowned hip hop specialist record shop mm -hmm. located at Free Marlborough Court off Carnaby Street. Mm -hmm. And moving from its Knoll Street location in Soho, the Carnaby st store was opened under new management in 2002. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I know. But like, yeah, I've like, I've been <laughs> past something. here, but I wasn't, sadly, I wasn't involved I in those the, days. Always, I wish I, I had been. I always get people saying, didn't you go there? Like, no, I didn't. No, I, didn't I wish I had. I wish I had. I think that's why I said I'd take you on there, because I, like, going back, I wish yeah. I'd been involved in those days, you know, but I just kind of slightly missed that generation and was also just a bit out of the loop from not being yeah. from London, in London at that no. time. Do you I'm know what I mean? I'm more new about the jump off. Which... Yeah, I mean, I was more like Kung Fu. Like, okay. um, tell me about I mean, Kung I didn't go a lot. I didn't go as much as I would like to. My, my whole late teens and 20s was me trying to persuade random friends to go to hip-hop things with me most of my life. Do you know what I mean? Now I've got an amazing group of people where I'll go to an event and I'll know everyone, and that's, yeah. that's great. That's amazing. That's where I want to be in life. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, most of my, my 20s were me trying to drag people to various hip-hop events. But yeah, Kung Fu, I did go a few times. I remember seeing Klashnikov perform was absolutely okay. epic. Um, that was just just beyond epic, yeah. Sarah Love DJ in there. Again, that was that was always an, an attraction because I really, really rated her as a DJ. Um, yeah, like, it was all a bit of a blur, you know, but I went Where was that? a few times. Um, I think it was at various different places, but all the times I went, it was at the Underworld uh, Camden. Okay. okay. Um, it's like by the World's End, like under yeah. the World's End pub kind of thing, the Underworld. But yeah, Kung Fu was a sick night. Um, yeah. And I wish I could have gone more. Um, yeah. But I did go a few times and they were just some of the best times. Like what, they'd years have was, what years was they like there? Um, well, when I went, it would have been like probably, I'm trying to think. 2003 or four yeah. or five, that kind of time. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not if I'm trying to work I out. I didn't have a clue them times. Yeah, probably like 2004 or five, something <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, but I wish I'd gone more. Like I wasn't some proper regular that was there all the time. That would have been mm -hmm. nice, but um, I was I more in tune with the jump off. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, and, and I, I never got to go to that, and I would have absolutely that, loved that was to. Heavy. Yeah, you know, like, time is, machine. Can we invent a time machine, yeah, please? This is my jump off. Story, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember, like, I know it started in 2003 and I don't think it was DT. Mm. I know it was later on, probably, because mm. oh, it went on for a long time. But this is my jump off story that I, I, I remember this. What did you do? <laughs> I just remember being there because we knew um, Professor Green. OK. Like, he, he, he's from our area. He's from Clapton, but that's mm. next door to us. We know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So we're going there and seeing him just, like, demolishing people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like... We, but yeah, that's just normal to mm. us, isn't it? So I've gone there one day and then they've said, yeah, open mic. So whoever wants to go on, these times I rap. So it must have been about 05, 06, yeah? Mm. And I remember, see my friends, like I've got a set of friends that like, mm. yeah, it doesn't matter where we are, like they're going to act how we, do you understand what mm. I'm saying? But we've got our own private jokes. And one of our jokes is like, one of the jokes was at the time was, like they said, um, open mic, and every all of my friends said, "Yeah, hey, Joanne Tizzy, <laughs> I hunt go." Like, oh, okay. it's like, "Yeah, hunt here, hunt." Like, but I'm saying, "Shut up, man. Mm. Behave yourself, man." You know, like I don't want the mm. embarrassment. Even though I rap, mm. I don't want to be like 
he's a rapper. Like, mm. do you get what I'm saying in it? So I'm still trying to compose myself. But they're thinking, nah, you're a rapper. And you're a rapper. Shut up, man. Mm. Hunt, hunt, hunt. Go up mm. there. Go up there. So, but I've like frozen and not gone <laughs> up there. When I plucked up the courage to think about going up there, someone's on the stage already. Like they've just hung, they've gone on there, mm. they're hungry, they're ready, and they're spitting, spitting, and then I hear that um, ad lib, cadet, 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 cadet. And I'm like, whoa, I'm just listening to this guy, and he's gone up there so organized, he's gone up there with about three, six, you know, like he's, it's like he knew that mm. there was an open mic and he knew what he was gonna do. He's just spat three, not even like, he's mm. just done three songs, like a cappella, basically, like mm. cadet though. But this was before I knew who Cadet was. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I always knew that he was destined to go on to do great yeah. things. The, the way he... I froze. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I, my friends was even saying... My friends, the joke was, that's not Hunt. <laughs> that was the next joke. You know, like, that's not mm. Hunt on the stage. But I knew that this guy's about his thing. You know, mm. like, where I wasn't... I had encouragement from my friends and I still wouldn't... Still mm. scared to go on the stage. This guy just went on. He was in the crowd with him and his brethren. They mm. went on and rocked the whole... Do you understand? He'd done his thing. That, so. that sounds amazing. Like, yeah, I do. I, I want always... that time machine and I want to go back to things like that because that's one thing I really just wish I'd just done more by myself when I was yeah. younger and not kind of waited on having friends doing the same thing because yeah. I just wish I'd just had the courage and knowledge of what was going on, where and exactly where it was to just rock up and... Mm. Just, and just go, go to things like that more things like by that. myself. Because there's a crowd, isn't it? But I would have made friends. I'm a friendly person. I would have made friends. So that's kind of like a big definitely. thing that if I could have done something differently, that's that's something I would have done. Just done more of it from earlier, basically. Yeah. How did you get the name Exposure Show? Um, it actually came from um, Rude DJ. Um, yeah. Because he, he... It's always been that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. He, he handed me the show. It kind of already had that name and I kind of made it my own because it's exposing underground music. Because yeah. the focus is on exposing music that you haven't heard elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I like to do, to expose new music. And, or if it's not new, just something you haven't heard, to play that obscure stuff, that underground stuff that, you yeah. know, teach you about a new artist. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Or get no, people to spit definitely. new bars as well. If they're coming on with live bars and stuff, a lot of time they've just written something you know, on the way here or something like that. So it's exposure. Mm. Is it? And, and also it's giving exposure to people that aren't getting it elsewhere sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and they deserve it. So I think the name is, is very, very fitting for, you know, for that reason. Um, yeah. Um, what's, what, oh, I don't know. Because there might be, there might be, there might be more. I know one of them, mm. but there might be. So I'm going to ask this. What's your biggest achievement? Ooh, well, I mean... I won the UK Hip Hop Award, which yes. um, um, TJ, oh, big up TJ Chill, TJ Chill, TJ Chill. DJ Chill, okay, TJ cool. Chill, he started it. There's actually an event coming up on the 28th of September where it's going to be the, the fourth UK award given up, best and it's UK an award for anyone in hip hop. So it could be a DJ, a rapper, you know, anyone. You know, Peaches won it last year, and she's like a entertainer. Peaches, yeah, okay, Peaches, the Peaches, you know, yeah, she's yeah. a host and entertainer and everything, yeah, yeah. all round entertainer. So anyone involved, it could be a producer, a DJ. A I don't know, it could be a manager, I don't know, it could yeah. be anyone, it could be a break dancer, yes. I don't know. Done anyone involved in hip-hop. Hip yeah. um, we want to make it bigger than it is. Um, I'm involved just DJing and helping organise the event, but like, yeah. I don't choose who wins, don't get at me. <laughs> yeah. But like, when, yeah. When did you win it? I won it, I was actually the first ever recipient of it, and okay. that was 2021. 2021. Um, so big up TJ Chill for just thinking my show deserved that, and like, because I'm like, yeah. when he wanted to give it to me, I was like, but I'm not, I'm not the best DJ out there, I'm not yeah. DMC champion or anything, you know, I'm not the best technical DJ, I would like to be that's one of my goals mm. but but it's for the kind of consistency of just repping just there. music repping yeah. what i believe in constantly championing the uk underground you know yeah. and okay i'm like all right fair enough i'll take that yeah. <laughs> like so that's one of them and just my biggest achievement is to be where i am now to be doing what i love doesn't mean it can't get bigger and i won't mm. be happier if it gets bigger anyway because if i any success for me is a success for uk hip-hop by bringing it with me yeah i'm not going to just run off and go do something different to make a load of money off it or something i'm just i'm not sensible like that <laughs> i'm not that kind yeah. of person so i think my other biggest achievement is just being involved to call some of my favorite rappers my friends yeah. and to be doing something that i believe in and makes me happy basically that's what everyone yeah. wants in life isn't it so so, oh, and my kids, my kids are my biggest achievement, big up my kids. Cool, cool, <laughs> like, cool, but, cool. Yeah, that, that would be my, like my top three biggest achievements um, yeah. for, for now. But that award's for now. big. Yeah, Obviously, it was very big. And very big as well. <laughs> my kids are, yeah, well, but my oldest kid's bigger than me, yeah. so yeah, big up her. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, big up, big up. <laughs> yeah, she's bigger than me now. But um, yeah, so 
no, a lot of a lot of achievements, but just being in a position where I can do what I love, where I'm I'm just involved and involved and respected. That's all I've wanted. I haven't cared specifically about money or fame or a specific amount of awards or anything like that or being on any certain platforms or anything. It's just being just feeling like I'm part of something I love. Yeah. I just wanted to be part of it. And I originally just thought that'd be like being a producer or researcher or something. And it's mm. turned out I've got a bit too much of a big mouth for that. So yeah. I ended up doing and, a lot more. And your show's still like running now, 100%, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 8 till 10 out. p.m. every Saturday. You know, very, very occasionally I'll miss a show if my social life or home life gets too hectic. But most of the time I can, you know, make a recorded show or something. So big yeah. up HFM for giving me that platform and letting yeah. me be part of the historic legacy you know we're going to be celebrating 25 years of hfm next year that's what i'm saying it's that's a crazy. it's a big thing to be involved you know and they're still pushing away and doing it for underground music and they give me the inspiration to keep going and push for my corner of the scene you know to mm -hmm. for these these artists to get seen yeah no definitely man it's massive what you're doing thank you thank you i'm, I'm very happy what you're with doing. it all right well listen i'm gonna to get to the last two Go on this in. one one this one is Name the ad lib. This is for the people at home. Oh, okay, again. good, good, good. If I know, I'll say, I'm so like, name I'm the not good. Ad so we're going to give them three ad libs. Okay. I'm probably going to, I say it all the time. I'm going to say it wrong because I'm not the person that says the ad lib. Okay. But if you know the ad lib, get me, just get over okay. how Hunt said it and then oh, okay. write who okay. it is. Do you know what I mean? Before you start thinking, oh, you didn't like, yeah. just write what the ad lib is, isn't it? Who, or who said it. Okay. So the first one is. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I just look like I'm a madman. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do these and still be cool. But you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's how... Might have done it wrong. But yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> Leave that down. The next one is... Gee... Shit, hold on, hold on. Jeez. We're going to say G unit then. <laughs> We're going to go G, -G, G unit. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Chance okay. is looking at me like, oh, okay. yeah, that sounds mad, Hunt. <laughs> I don't know what that one is. All right, here's this one. You lot should get this one at home. Never. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Name the ad lib. <laughs> you lots at home, leave some comments below. All right. I'm going to, we're going to end it off with this one, yeah? Okay. What's new? What's next? What's new? What's next? Oh, well, I mean, what's new is actually the title of the feature on 521 that I do with Blade, where we okay. talk about new. Well, it was supposed to be what's new, but we talk, call it was new now because some of, we have busy lives and couldn't quite keep up to date. So hopefully we're filming some more of those. But um, we've both got hectic lives, so that we're not doing them quite as much as we'd like to. But yeah, definitely some more with 521. Yeah. Um, and just and what was it based off? Sorry, uh, five twenty one Blades YouTube channel. Yeah, no, but what's what's the um, subject oh, of what you're? Oh, you we we review um, albums and EPs. Okay, that's um, it's needed. Yeah, basically, Blade plays a grumpy character that um, pretends not to like them, who will hate someone for yeah. basically being better than him. Yeah. Um, and then I would just go on about how great they are and how you should go check out their music, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, they're 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 quite funny. People tell me, but yeah. um, yeah, I try and play it straight. Well, Blades a total nutter, yeah. but yeah. hopefully, hopefully, we'll be filming a few more of those soon. Um, a few more to come up, and I just want to be playing out on more events. I actually really want to improve more as a technical DJ. Like yeah. I was watching the DMC championships the other day and I was like, wow, I want to do that one day. Maybe when I'm like 70 and retired and haven't got mm. a load of other stresses. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I would just love to be just a bit better technically as a DJ, playing out at more things. Um, mm. And just to keep going with what I'm doing, um, to just rep UK in any way that I can and create opportunities for artists that have so much talent that I just really feel deserve it. That's that's why I do it, because I love the music and the culture and just, just to keep doing things to push it forward in any way I can. Yeah. And and just have fun. That's you know, yeah. That's why that's why we're here to just help each other out and have fun. That's what I believe. So yeah, everybody go out there, get a night out, have some fun. Come yeah. to a UK hip hop's event. Loads of them are free. Get off your sofas, come and support some amazing artists, okay? Live yeah. music is life, seriously. Yeah. No, sounds good, man. Sounds good, definitely, man. Well, you know what? I feel like we've chopped it up and we've got like a good meaty chunk mm. of information oh, yeah. for them to take I of talk what a lot, it I know. is. <laughs> no, what this is what's it called, man? There's gonna be people that are fully appreciate this. 
this um information. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like, cause this is. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're putting things together with. You're just so humble and so modest that you're just like finding it off and not realizing that you're like hip hop royalty. What are you talking about, hey, man? Like, I'll you putting bloody people. On. That's achievement. That's, I've been that's coming on I'm your show with. over ten years. Like, I can. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. from since. Listen, you're doing your thing, man, and you Thank deserve you. to be. Thank you. Bigged up at every occasion, man. I don't know mm. why you think any less. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah, this is what this show's for. This is what the um, golden era is about. It's about cementing and mm. stamping the people that actually put the fans on. That yeah. Gave you the information. You never knew this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You never knew about these people. And it's people like her that allow you to sit at home and listen because mm. she's doing all the work, finding the people. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. The people are sending you the music. So... Like I say, I always waffle on. I don't want to do that. Long <laughs> long. I'm going to end it off. This is the Golden Era UK Rap Podcast with... DJ Sammy J. Until next time. Really? I'll keep this, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We all got dreams that we got to pursue. I mean, we all got dreams that we got to believe in. I mean, we all got targets that we got to achieve. So how can I rest when I got family to feed? I mean, I mean, with my intuition, I'll make wise decision. I'll navigate the chaos and avoid collision. Stick to the program and follow my vision. I'm just trying to keep it real. I got a legacy to build. It's Yo, real. I do.